We're totally in line. Ten d six fire damage. Oh. So now we're live. And now, hey everybody, welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. This is Between the Rolls. I am the host slash not host Kyle. Uh, much like on <laughs> Saturday's game, uh, I'm going to let Frank take care of it after I've done all the introductions. Uh, hey, we that's begin, right. You were in that game. You're doing the recap on that I one. Told I told you I could have done the recap. I, I totally spaced But that. I You're was on muted and you totally didn't hear me. And I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, guys, before we get started, go through our field. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archives. You want to hit us wow. up? You can do that on Discord. If you want to play in one of our games, go ahead and at mhoboinc at gmail.com. Uh, am I skipping it all? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, but if, uh, if you want to listen to bases, I don't understand why you would do that, but you can follow the link down below, and that'll take us to the Murder Hobo Inc. podcast. Uh, otherwise, we also have some really awesome swag, just in case you hit the wrong link. But while you're there, you might as well go and buy some uh, awesome cred swag, uh, some awesome calamity swag. Uh, uh, skip everything else. Honestly, it's the cred and the calamity that's worth it. Um, I'd like to thank our sponsors tonight, Pirate Dog Dice, uh, proof that you can turn a dog turd and make it into a natural 20. If it rolls a natural one, though, it does release a scent. Luckily, our other sponsor, Adventure Sense, covers that with putrid sewers and other nice smells. Uh-oh, did we lose Frank tonight? Looks kind of like it. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to continue think... on for just a little bit. I'm good. Bit. Oh, here he comes. Not that good. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, they also have How to RPG with Your Cat. Is that Kickstarter still going live? Mm-hmm. 100% funded. Live. 100% funded. Now we're getting stretch goals. Uh, donate lots of money, and you have a chance to win mm-hmm. their uh, Cat Scratch Tower, Dice Tower. It is an awesome thing. Or you can get the Cat's Eye Die. They use fresh cats uh for that so you know it's gonna go well um i'm just saying and finally they also had the shine project have you ever written a story and you're like man this is this is unfulfilling this this doesn't have any meat to the bones may i suggest picking up the shine project they'll ask you the questions you forgot to ask yourself and it really fleshes out a story quite nicely um and honestly, I think that's it, other than introductions. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm the DM of Cred Campaigns. Every once in a while, I will play a game, but that's once in a, a blue moon and never, ever again. Uh, we'll lead over to Frank to introduce himself, and he can pass the buck on if he wants after that. Uh, hey, if you don't know who I am, thanks for joining us for your very first yeah. time. Otherwise, oh, uh, I'm Frank. Oh, you're fine. We, we talk over each other all the time. Fuck uh, out of here. I'm going to tag on uh, his spiel and point out that we just posted a notice because we just heard from Threadless uh, something about like $11.99 t-shirts. So Done. I'm buying all the credit. Check, check that one out. Uh, other than that, uh, Frank, uh, been here forever. Over to you, Rob. I'm Rob. Uh, I played Dave on the Calamity campaign and Cup on the Calamity B campaign and uh, numerous creatures over six feet tall on uh, Frank's one shots. Sometimes I play them that are under five feet tall. Uh, <clears throat> otherwise, um, yeah, I'm longtime DM and recently returned to being a player and somebody's knocking on my door. So uh, I'll turn it back over to Frank. I'll turn it back over to Kyle. <laughs> You have to talk about cacophony, so I'll turn it back over to Frank. That's fair. Episode 289, folks, last Thursday, if you missed it, it's the cacophony saga. We were going to end cacophony, honestly, but uh, yeah, not going to do it. I came up with a fantastic idea that's going to prolong the soap opera, much to the delight of my wife and most likely the delight of David, our other player in that. Uh, I'm not saying that they're going to go visit Dewey Dockamel's homeland, but Looks like they're going to go visit Dewey Dockamel's homeland, boys and girls. That's right. Uh, they uh, tried in vain to go ahead and destroy the magical box by throwing it into the volcano. That did not work. 
Uh, so they have returned to the uh, Grand Academy and discovered that. Uh... <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! You can always just mute yourself and let them talk. <laughs> Uh, they uh, mute yourself, they, tell them to shut up, and then unmute yourself. Yeah, because we can't see the word shut the fuck up as you mouth. Them. Uh, uh, for mature audiences only, folks. Uh, so they had to go back to the Grand Academy and they have discovered that their uh, longtime friend and time traveler, Mortimer J. Sneed, is suffering from time travel illness. And uh, they have they are now the recipients of the stolen time travel device. I honestly thought that you were going to find him in a closet <clears throat> with a rope around his neck and it's Mortimer Jason, not in his David Carradine. It's still too soon for that, Kyle. Uh, Is it? <laughs> and uh, they are headed to uh, the land of the gnomes, uh, because they understand there's a kind of good library down there so uh, we will see how they do a week from thursday because this they act just like little girls. right on thursday the cthulhu uh, ensemble and saturday uh calamity b b so uh that reminds guys, me i've got to rewatch that episode remember boff uh and i'm going to turn it over to kyle because he played in saturday's one shot uh one that i i gotta say near and dear to my heart because i really liked writing that one kyle Tell us about the bronze crab. Bronze crab. Bronze. You know, the thing, all, all the good things will be there on Tuesday. All the good things will be there on Tuesday. <coughs> oh, anyway. Uh, so, uh, uh, Frank ran for us a game, a one-shot inspired by the previous Between the Rolls uh, topic, which was... Vehicles. Vehicles. And so our players, who were quite short and small in stature, uh, ran across a sign uh, saying uh, they uh, adventurers were needed to help test something out. And so four hardy adventurers uh, who were not incontinent in any way, shape, or form <laughs> showed up on a beach where a group of gnomes introduced a giant bronze crab a brand new submersible vehicle and it needed to be tested out because they were confident it was going to work and hold water there was no issues and they just needed some adventures to help them out and we were just the ones to do it and so frank completely nullified our characters and said you get to operate the arm you get to operate the other arm and here are the legs enjoy you could have been 12th level bastards. It wouldn't have done anything. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we ignored Frank's uh, desire to do nothing but move arms and legs. And we certainly cast our spells and did all that fun stuff, too. So that was great. Um, what happened? Yeah. Uh, we went underwater. We almost drowned, but didn't. There was lots of rat bit poop involved rabbit rabbit raisins involved yeah. rabbit raisins mm. rabbit raisins Kyle, Kyle played a rabbit folk uh hair honey on. seeds <laughs> an incontinent one at that no no uh, to be fair i made a character who was revolved around dirt and then we decided eh, let's put him in a submersible surrounded by water Mother- <laughs> That's how you hose your players, young DMs. That's how you screw them over. You're like, hmm, he's going to do something, but let's do it completely different. Uh, we went through, we explored uh, a, a small little cove there. Uh, <coughs> our goal was to reach a, uh, a reef, plant a flag in the name of these gnomes who created a bronze crab. Uh, we utterly failed that. Uh, we're attacked by various creatures and a more... A more an amorous uh, giant crab that went well uh, a giant shark several underwater ghouls and we lost a lot of octopi on the way back for certain and that's pretty much it you'll have to well, watch because you, your octopi uh, made it yeah but we lost the other ones yeah. and ooh, and I got rich but that's okay oh my goodness that's true 
folks at home, uh, please know that Rob is in a state where that's legal. <laughs> Kyle Texas. and I are still in the dark ages uh, in Hoosier land. Hoosier <clears throat> land. So you liked it though, right? Oh, the one shot? The yeah. one shot is great. No, I, if uh, DMs are out there wondering how to do a, uh, uh, a vehicle right, that is probably a great example, especially if it's right out of your ass, which is yeah. what Frank always does. I, I think my favorite part of that was Carol pointing out that there was no way to obtain research materials. Didn't even consider that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but my constant telling her, oh, is it not as good as your submersible that you <laughs> uh, made it happy? The final scenario of last week was the Margu campaign. This is episode two of the B side. I entitled it the camp. Uh, these guys are headed. Uh, they've been released uh, of their duties as caravan guards due to new management. Uh, some of them not so happy. Smarter Others, management. Yeah, other, others uh, kind of a little bit happier. <clears throat> they heard before they got thrown out of the city unceremoniously of a cave in the middle of this area that they've been traversing for years, and they've opted to go visit that. Uh, it's a cave with allegedly a large snake in it. On their way there, they, uh, <laughs> they went into a gully to investigate a dead body, and the bugbears lying in wait let timbers go down, and I damn near TPK the party with just lumber. Uh, they fought back bravely and honorably. One went to below zero hit points, uh, and the others were kind of banged up when a famous uh, caravan guard made an appearance, uh, Hamish Tenson. Uh, he uh, took them into his camp, uh, which was strangely like a bandit camp. Uh, but they know this guy is an honorable man. But the longer they stayed in camp, the more they started to figure out that something is amiss because he was apparently getting ready to hit an armored caravan, which is a rarity in these parts. And he had three siege engine rams and had taken hostages. Um, the party beat feet and... Uh, more problems ensued. Uh, this is Margu B, second episode. So <clears throat> if you want to get in at the very beginning, all of these are on our archives. Some of them are still on our Twitch channel. Like Kyle said earlier, if you don't want to look at the money makers, uh, just download it from Podbean and listen to it. Uh, it is a good time. It is three generations of players, uh, grandpa to grandson and granddaughter. Uh, and everybody in between. So highly recommend it, Margu. They will be playing again this Sunday. Uh, maybe they make it to the cave this time. Back to you, Kyle. Back to me. Sure. Whoa. Back to you, Kyle. Or well, we, we can just say fuck it to... and call 13 minutes. <laughs> yeah, let's call, call 13 minutes. Uh, guys, Good episode. Good episode. <laughs> main topic tonight uh, that we're talking about are these guys. Uh, which I learned from my grandfather that they're called NPCs. I never knew that. So uh, if you didn't know that, here you go. I had a, a, an 81-year-old man have to tell me that. That's that's really sad. You're pointing to your background and not us, right? I, uh, yeah, well, I mean, Frank, <laughs> you can kind of do that look. Okay. Uh, but honestly, uh, Frank, this is your topic tonight. I thought you were going to run it, so go ahead and run it. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, folks, uh, to me, one of the major backbones of a good game are good NPCs. Uh, you got to have a cast uh, who are not all Dwayne the Rock Johnson. You need a few well, Dwayne strange the Rock ones. Johnson was awesome. Well, no, no, no. Dwayne the Rock Johnson is awesome, but he's a leading man. Dwayne the, the Brick, Brick Johnson. Oh, Dwayne the Brick Johnson is in there we cacophony. Go. So That's right. uh, when you run an adventure, uh, whether it be the guy or lady giving you the job or just some window dressing, a good NPC will make your players happy. And if you make them good enough, they'll talk about them forever. Um, and that 
I mean, that's why we play this game, to have so much fun that we retell stupid-ass stories years later. Uh, it's been over a year since Carol smashed her face into the gargoyle at the Tower of Uma Thurman in Cacophony, and that's still one of our favorites. Earlier, we mentioned Mortimer J. Sneed from Cacophony. Guy's a legend. Uh, he's a time traveler. He has way too much sex, and he's very obnoxious, and he has a catchphrase. But for years, years from now, we will still talk about Mortimer J. Sneed and what he meant to all of us. Uh, so Is he from the Academy? He is from the Grand Academy. He was on sabbatical in oh, Cacophony. That's yes, right. That's, that's right. right. Uh, but uh, when you make an NPC, granted, uh, you're going to have a lot of Steves in there or Stavettas. Uh, but if you can get a few important ones like Lord Bushmill, uh, your players are going to remember them for a very long time. I don't think can... he's an NPC. I think he's a villain at this point, at now, least see? in some people's eyes. See, that, and that's what I'm talking about. So when, <laughs> as young DMs, uh, it's not easy to come up with these ideas. Uh, so tonight we're going to try and show you some examples. We're going to go ahead and make a few, uh, and we're going to show you, in our opinion, how it's done. I will make a plug for the complete book of villains. It's an old second edition uh, blue book, and it was fantastic. Uh, if you're got... listening to this and you've ever talked to Frank... He will always recommend the blue book of the complete villains. Yeah. The, the I think this is now the 18th or 19th time uh, it, tonight that he's mentioned it. It is a fantastic resource. The blue books from the second edition are timeless. No shit. They're timeless. Uh, it's like watching an old Adam 12 show. Uh, what they did then is what cops still do today, only with less beating. Uh, but again, uh, a villain, a good guy, uh, a patron, you know, maybe it's some baron who is always given the party juicy jobs. Uh, give him some flair. If you know this individual is going to be in your group a lot, start fleshing them out. Make him almost like your very own PC, in my opinion. Uh, give him some kind of weird trait, uh, whether it be a uh, speech impediment, uh, an abusive attitude. Uh, that is copyrighted by me, however. All of mine have a. It really attitude. is. And yet, somehow, all my NPCs come out that way. I was raised that way. Right? That's I learned it from watching you. <laughs> Kyle, why are your NPCs all a bunch of dicks? I learned it by watching Frank. And it's Frank's fault. Why Don Schmidt told me how to do that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the sad part is ago. my very first one shot I ran for people, the NPCs were all dicks, and that's a true story. Hey, it's, it's just <laughs> easier that way. It really uh, is, but it's <clears throat> Rob, you haven't spoken in forever. <laughs> uh, tell us your experience, your viewpoint on making a good NPC for a campaign? Well, the first thing that I have to say about it is generally I have to wait until the characters pick the one they want Fair. because I can make fantastic NPCs all day long and they'll ignore the hell out of them. <laughs> so, so what you have to do is, or at least in my opinion, what you have to do is have that NPC in your background, but be willing to change their name when the characters attached to them nice. uh, or just go, Hey, okay, they like this dude. Here's his name. You can kind of figure out which one they're interested in. Um, but yeah, traits are good. Um, they have to serve some purpose to the party or the party's not going to be interested in them. Um, usually. Unless they just Oblin do it to the frustrate goblin, their DS. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or, or they, you know, they have to play some role in the story. Um, but oftentimes... <laughs> And and I think I think you'll look at it if you if you look at your character. Nobody remembers like Steve the Tower Guard usually, but like um, 
in one of my early campaigns, I wanted to mess around and have a kick-ass monk uh, fighter, and I named him Buck Morris because I just shifted a letter backwards. They remembered him forever. I got it. Yeah. (laughs) Did he have a beard? Yes, he had a beard. And yes, he had a punch. Was he a Texas Ranger at one point in time? No, 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 but his brother was. Ah, Uh nice. A ranger. His brother was a ranger in the mythical land of Tejas. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> but and the thing is, is like you know, I wanted a fighting monk, so I waited until they picked which of the monks that they liked and <clears throat> drove that way and made him named him Buck Morris. Oh, I always go for the drunken master, man. Oh, yeah. Well, drunken that master could be a good one. But I found out that like screwy ass names your NPC or, or if they hit that pop culture reference, like you've got Dwayne, the brick, I had Buck Morris. I mean, you got to do something fun or do something really complex and give them a nickname. And then that seems to work out too. Like Skippy Lee, the annoying halfling. Kyle, what about you? What do you think makes a good NPC in a campaign or one shot? Uh, uh, just a unique thing. Uh, obviously, I'm running something that's already written, so the NPCs are already there. Um, some of them, anyway. Um, and what I'm finding that I just do is I'll just read it. I'll read the stat block. If uh, anything interesting comes up story wise, is really what I'm looking for. And then after that, it's highlighting either what's great about them or highlighting a flaw uh, uh, just a little bit too much. Uh, For example, we talk about cred. We have Captain Lothar and his uh, axe is his binky. And when he does not have it, he is not happy and he's a little paranoid. Or um, just making someone sound devious by talking in a southern accent and uh, making them know just a little too much and oh my gosh Carol is put on her toes with that Um, and so it's just taking something and taking it a little further than it necessarily needs to uh, uh, I find makes a memorable character um, or just make a punching bag for one of the carrier characters for example jeremiah is not an npc in the venture but he got beat around so much by poor cleo (laughs) and it was just awesome in any fight everything that came along and then the stuff that happened to the poor guy afterwards just toss him in the water in full armor he'll be fine (laughs) nobody's worried about jeremiah (laughs) <laughs> well, to be fair, your crew does roll like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it's intentional, though. Well, they can't. Oh, is Jeremiah missing? Oh, <laughs> uh, we better go to town and just leave him out here. <laughs> <laughs> no idea where he's at. The guy's a dick anyway. Yeah, let's just let's leave. <laughs> and, and you know what? That's an excellent segue. Uh, Kyle's mentioned it. Rob's mentioned it. I mentioned it. Uh, as a DM, sometimes it's nice to have an NPC be a total jerk. Uh, one, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, one, it helps uh, story gather, motivation. Yeah, it gets the party going so they can focus on this creature. Uh, everybody can get on the same page. The other, and I always like to speak to the young DMs out there, the other is uh, sometimes your players are dicks <laughs> and you need to ring them up. Uh, I We had one scenario probably three years ago and the mission was to take an elderly grandwoman or grand lady from one town to another to stand trial. And she was like, throw mama from the train, just abusive. And one of our early players, Hallie, was was always even keeled. 
I mean, she could always, she you know, really was. <laughs> yeah, she could always balance uh, how her player reacts to things. And I made that old lady so abusive that Hallie kicked her skull <laughs> <laughs> and just forego on the reward because they had a really healthy reward to get her from point A to point B. And every it chance I have could. Any the old lady would screw with them, and finally, she just kicked her to death. <laughs> and to me, that was hilarious. And that was like episode six or seven or eight. I mean, that's how long ago it was. We're at two ninety. Uh, was that the Brian Cranston episode of X Files? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was. Uh, but you know what? Those are the two reasons that I like to use an asshole uh, NPC. One is to get the party together, give them the con common enemy, even if it isn't an enemy. Just get them focused in on this and then hit them from the side. Or if your players are being jerks, it's okay to give you know a couple levels to this guy and go ahead and ring their bell uh, just to keep them... Uh, kind of humble, I'll say. Uh, what do you think about that, Rob? Well, I think if they're really being jerks, I'm going <laughs> to give them an asshole who's also their patron quest giver. Nice. So that they can't really fuck with them too much without losing their cash cow. That'll work. Go ahead and give me an example of how you would be uh, abusive to them. Oh, well, I, I'll give you an example and I'll, I'll give you one. I was thinking about it a little bit before the thing. So I'm going to give you uh, where we got here. Uh, uh, okay. So a uh, high level NPC uh, who is a, um, a ladron of super snooty demeanor would continuously talk down to the party. Um, but he's also going to have a high charisma and be a totally bitching goth. So it's that kind of attitude to throw down. And I'm like, you couldn't even understand the fey magics I control. <laughs> this kind of thing. <laughs> I already want to kick his teeth. In. There you go. And his name, he, I, I gave him a, a, one of those like fucking Aladrin name, like Terrell Elijah Shadow on Stova Start and Verdashad Nir Mirin and Vidashi and so Harry you can just sure. call him Robin or shut the fuck up because he doesn't want you butchering his language. Nice. That'll work. And uh, how did your players respond? I, I don't know yet. I haven't used him. Just made him today. Uh, uh, what? You're getting ahead of yourself. Uh, Kyle, how about you? Do, do you use him as an asshole? Do you use him as a foil? What have I missed on this one? Man, uh, at this point... Um... One of my favorite uses for the asshole is to be a, a good guy, maybe who's gone just maybe a little bit too far. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Magistrate Alwiji from the Cred campaign um, is so busy trying to keep the town together, keep this treaty between these ghouls that are eating the dead people and the people on the island just trying to keep everything together going happy that he is always stressed out and tense and he is just a complete and utter asshole about it but he's not a bad guy and i mean i've certainly met a few of those people who are just a little bit over the top they have their um they're murder hobos kyle they're not murder hobos what are you talking about no 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 uh, they have their sights set so high that nobody really meets it. And if they do, it's like, eh, well, all right, you're fine. Uh, but I mean, that he, they're total assholes. Uh, they mean well, but they just go about it the wrong way. And I find introducing those kind of uh, characters to players um tends to make put them on their toes as far as you like it he's an asshole but he's a good guy but but here's this really nice guy who's going to stab me in the back later obviously and 
Oh, the cultists over here are really nice and friendly. They offered me Kool-Aid the other day. Uh, luckily, I had my own water, but it looked delicious. The Temple of Ghana called. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know what? With that, uh, let's talk about, because I'm always aiming towards the young DMs, let's talk about when the party decides they've had enough. I mentioned uh, Hallie kicking the shit out of Grandma. Let's go a little bit more recent. Uh, if you're a big fan of the Calamity campaign, uh, I am. The NPC Doff uh, was really a giant thorn in their sides. Uh, what do you mean, was Frank? <laughs> well, uh, we all know Scott iced him. Uh, so, what the question to you two is going to be this: You have an NPC. You are determined to make him just this foil uh but not a not an evil foil just a giant pain in the ass roadblock to the party and the party decides screw it he's bought and paid for and then they kill him so let's say uh for argument's sake that maybe Dolph had a bigger purpose in the campaign <laughs> and now he's dead at the hands of the party uh, how do you go about, do, do you prefer, screw it, he's done, erase him, or is there going to be retribution? Uh, we'll start with Rob. Oh, I'm kind of hoping there's retribution. Uh, retribution. Usually I, I prefer worlds in where uh, actions have some sort of consequences to them. Have you seen so, how you've played? <laughs> yes, absolutely have. Tell that to Peck Peck. <laughs> His actions had bad consequences, I can tell. Oh, Dave's actions have no consequences. Dave has no thought at all. Yeah, that's that's the benefit of having a seven intelligence and a seven charisma. So if you're the DM and uh, Daybreak is occurring and Dolph is dead... How do you handle it? Uh, do you go on an unholy rant? Now, we know he's only got one loved one left, and that just happens to be the leader of town, but what do you do? Oh, I, as the DM, mm -hmm. prepare for mayhem. Okay. With our party? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if Scott hadn't killed him, Dave probably would have. I mean, if Rakir hadn't done it, Dave probably would have gotten a fight with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i scott's character uh rock here was gunning for his ass oh yeah since, i know since episode one uh and, and that was that was by design uh you he guys... got pissed off by dave dave got, <clears throat> he pissed dave off in episode three so mm -hmm. yeah it was it was by design you guys took the bait on that oh uh, yeah but then he turned into a nice guy Somewhat or, gleefully. Or, or at least I thought he turned into a nice guy. Bullshit, uh, he was still a dick. <laughs> Kyle, how do you handle this uh, dilemma <laughs> when uh, the players wipe out? Hi, NPC? kids! Yeah. <laughs> Retribution, as I said earlier, is the way to go. Um, however, it does not always have to come at the end of a sword or an arrow or something like that. It doesn't have to be an angry child vowing revenge against the party. It could be... Uh, Your father taking say, 11 minutes to die. <laughs> it could be that. Uh, it could be um, if he is a big character and he's not an evil character, but he's doing good things. It's like, okay, everything <laughs> that he's been holding up because he has been here it's a vacuum now and ever the tower falls in on itself. And so suddenly you realize that, um, gosh, I couldn't think of an example off the top of my head, which is a damn shame. That's why I don't do iron DM. I host it. Uh, <laughs> uh but suppose he, uh, gave money to the homeless or something or paid off somebody um maybe it was under the table illegal but it was for the greater good now that greater person's good. not getting the greater <laughs> good so, oh, okay 
Uh, I love that movie. That movie um, is awesome. It is. Uh... <laughs> you haven't seen Hot Fuzz? 14 thumbs up. That movie's fucking hilarious. It's quite it's ridiculous, too. Just don't ask where he got the thumbs. That's that's the important question there. From my players. Yeah. Uh, maybe you, here we go. We have an annoying bard who just ah, drinks and sings and he sings all night long, gives your players exhaustion uh, and complete and utter dick, but it turns out that him singing uh, kept the giant Tarrasque asleep and now he wakes up because he does not have his Betty time music anymore and it's the, just uh, Harry Potter theme the Harry Potter theme dun, dun, dun. yeah that musical harp musical. with the giant Cerberus dog I honestly haven't read that since I was three so yeah it's been a while wow yeah was that the Goblet of Fire one Gillyweed. Okay. Anyway, I can't. I can't remember which one it was, but there was the <laughs> thing in the tower that they had to put asleep. All right, that, hell, that was a hundred years ago. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, but retribution in the sense of he is gone, and everything that he has held back now fills in the void. Um, or you know, he was an important character. He knew the one way to defeat the big bad evil guy, and you killed him. And unfortunately, he never had time to tell his son. So instead of, of having the answer, you now have to go on a quest to try and find the answer. And you may not be successful, and your campaign ends with you failing, which is perfectly fine for a campaign, uh, yeah. as my players will eventually find out. If they survive. If they don't uh, survive, the campaign ends in failure. Now, here's one for you. And I really, I, I tend to like to use this one, especially with Mortimer, uh, the reoccurring NPC. For me, uh, it's always easier to make a memorable NPC when they just keep freaking showing up. Uh, Mortimer J. Sneed accidentally bumped into the party. Uh, one of the other NPCs that I dearly love is Skippy Lee. He's a halfling, and he's just a pain in the ass. He's, he's written based on Tasselhoff from the Dragonlance series, and he's just a giant pain in the ass. But he means well. Uh, he, his, his intentions are never evil. His actions always cause stress. So... In your opinion, as panel, uh, what do you like using that one, or do you consider it an overused trope? Uh, start with Rob again. Which trope? The recurring character? The reoccurring, oh. uh, ne'er do well. Well, yeah, but not exactly gold. a nemesis, but yeah. kind of a like may work at cross purposes, but not really intentionally to the party. Mm -hmm. the, the foil, yeah. I like using that. I'm thinking about one right now. There you go. Uh, that's what this show does, is it just sparks our creativity. It's not Iron DM, but it still sparks it. Uh, do you see any drawback with using that? I, I know in campaigns, if they're moving the width and breadth of the world, it can be somewhat difficult to say, oh, uh, you know, this jackass just wildly appeared with you. How do you go ahead and smooth that over, Rob? Well, you know, generally your characters have a quest in an area <coughs> that draws them there. So, you know, you can't do it everyone, but like if this quest they run into dude and then like four quests later they run into dude and he's like, after the same thing they are and why don't we pool our resources and work together and that kind of thing can happen or, you know, eventually he can be there to foil them. Yeah. I would, I would just like make it less unintentional. Okay. That's fair. And maybe even have them be, you know, well, I was traveling here because I heard rumors of da, 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 da. Um, but yeah. not competition. Well, not openly. 
Okay. There may be, and and maybe a shadowy figure in some other adventures may turn out to be that character later on. Nice. Or they uh, may be manipulating minions against the party openly while being a resource for the party, supposedly. Kyle, your thoughts on that one? Uh, as far as reappearing characters, um, I haven't had the chance to. Uh, other than the Udu clan, but honestly, my NPCs are also my PCs, uh, and I just have them spread out. And it's not one reoccurring character, but a group of reoccurring characters under the same clan uh, with same similar oddities. Um, so that's one way to do it. It's not necessarily an individual that you can have reappear over and over. It can be the same wacky clan. Um if you're doing one person, though, um, a great inspiration uh, for that reoccurring character. Uh, for those <laughs> familiar with the show called Brooklyn Nine-Nine, a, co a comedy show, we have the Pontiac Bandit, who shows up uh, once a season. Uh, and the reason why he shows up is because he needs help from the titular character. Um, and he's actively seeking him out. It's like, oh, well, awesome. We got these cruise tickets for winning this thing. And they get on the cruise and it's like, oh, the Pontiac Bandit gave us the cruise tickets. And here he is. Surprise, surprise. And so that's one way. It's not I've heard a rumor or, oh, I just randomly appear. It's like, I'm here for your. Sure. I'm here for you specifically. And uh, you're a tool to me, but. Um, but a useful one, and I'm going to keep using you every chance I get where it's uh, opportune for me. Now, the issue with that, though, is the character, the NPC has to be uh, a lovable, enjoyable. It's not a, a, a dick that you can yep. enforce people because they're using the party, so they need to be enjoyable, and it's like, oh, yeah, he's back again. How's he going to screw us over this time? Yeah, he's cool enough to have around. I'm interested in finding out, but I'm going to get him this time. And of course, they never do. But and that's one way to do it. So just, just make sure he always pays them, and then yeah, yeah, there you keeps go. them coming back for more. Well, now how about the the? I, I'm thinking of the secondary offshoot of, and, and I'll go back to Dragon Lance. Uh, I oh. know that's DJ's forte. But I, I I love that series. A lot of people uh, have read it too. So. Yeah, one of their main reoccurring sub characters was Fizben, the uh, yep. precocious mage who never really understood the effects of fireball. He, however, turned out to be uh, the celestial deity uh, and just appearing as a uh, befuddled old man mm -hmm. do you and i know kyle mentioned uh patron earlier do you think it is wise to use that type of character as the reoccurring npc for fear that the party might not either like them or want to work with them rob uh so basically, it's the 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 power in disguise um, trope. You know, um, it, we see it in mythology with like uh, Odin does it, visits people as a wanderer. Um, Zeus does it. Yeah, I mean everybody. You know, everybody <laughs> does it exactly. Everybody. I mean, this is this is the 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 uh, Passover tradition of keeping an open seat for a stranger that might visit because it could be an angel. Um, right. th it's pretty common to human so it's so it's a hook point so it's in people's psyche um, from multitudinous backgrounds that the 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 stranger that might be connected to the divine somehow so that you got to be like oh we better be like there's something about this person we better be like kind of cool with them even if we don't know everything about them or whatnot so I think it can work that way Okay. You just got to make, make them interesting. Do you make that a major artery in the campaign? 
or just leave it as a uh, enjoyable NPC to touch base with. I either um, kind of would depend on how the campaign goes and where the characters steer the campaign. Okay, fair. Kyle, same question. I mean, the key word on that one is patron, uh, and they're always there. They're always showing up, always offering a quest. Um, and I mean, let's apply it completely directly <clears throat> with warlocks. Their patrons are often creatures in disguise, at least trope wise. I mean, sure. I mean, that's why you have these items that the players bond with. They don't actually really understand the full scope of what they're going through. Um, Ernie's character, uh, Riley, uh, all he knows is that his patron gives him knowledge and gives him these cool ways to record it uh he doesn't remember forgetting sayings and having that stuff taken away from him uh but then just having those creatures um reappearing as npcs uh no that's perfectly fine and they <laughs> are all powerful so i mean if your players try and kill them honestly the only thing they're going to do is piss off a god and you know we got beauty and the beast and every other type of thing where players get screwed because they don't treat a uh, uh, an NPC the way they should really really <laughs> really 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 <laughs> Lord Bushmill's son uh, that was Blake and the other one was that wasn't Kyle. well, and he was allowed to live. Uh -huh. He had a uh -huh. knife to the tree so he could cut himself free eventually, and 500 gold pieces. Yeah, that one did uh, throw me. Uh, seeing you and Ernie flip roles there, and you being the nice what? guy. I... I'm sorry, the guy who burned down the bridge with a lightning bolt is the nice guy? Yeah. How do you know? No, how do he know that uh, lightning would catch wood on fire? I mean, uh, objectively speak, well, he did it so that they couldn't run across and kill him. Uh, kill him specifically in this selfish act. Kyle's yes, yes. character went ape shit after getting a prison tattoo. For and love. Oh, okay. like no, 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 no. <laughs> Kyle went ape shit, not Kyle's character. <laughs> Kyle went ape shit, and his character killed eighteen people. That's uh, right. Yeah, in a jail cell. We can talk about fire. that at a different time. I don't know. It sounds like memorable player NPC. motivation. Well, he was a memorable PC. Uh, Bushmill was the my favorite NPC in that group. Uh, okay, so now uh, we all know I love Iron DM. I I love putting these guys through their paces. Uh, for that's not until rolling. next month that's not until next month what are you doing right now it, it's in two weeks well tonight we're going to create uh each one of us will go ahead and create an npc with random roles um and we'll go ahead and flesh it out for you and then you can kind of watch our thought process maybe it helps you maybe it doesn't so we'll start with rob yep. rob yours is going to be good neutral or evil and it is evil <laughs> yes it is a uh druid so okay. you need an evil druid uh kyle mm -hmm. you get the good one oh. and of course it's a paladin, paladin. Uh, and any uh, a, his a, name is jeremiah he <laughs> talks like this I, I mine is the neutral one. Neutral druid, 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 right? fighter. Neutral fighter. Good paladin. Uh, and evil druid. Wow, talk about your tropes there. Uh, anybody got their fleshed out yet, or do you want me to go? You are demanding, sir. Uh, I am gonna go with. Tolula Bedouin. Uh, she is a fighter. She is uh, an 
outlander fighter. Uh, she is going to meet with the party uh, heavily, <coughs> heavily scarred, very little armor. We're going to go with the misogynistic approach on her armor, uh, chainmail bikini, a bulging muscles, uh, kind of a Xena type individual. Uh, she's going to have a catchphrase, uh, and that catchphrase is going to be, uh, I'm going to wear your tongue as a necklace. Uh, and she is neutral to the party, so she will be both an asshole and a benevolent friend. Uh, on the benevolent side, she's going to go ahead and be the, hey, if you're looking for something, I heard XYZ is over here. I don't care about it. If you're interested, go ahead. Uh, on the negative side... Every once in a while, uh, and not very often, because you don't want to overuse something like this, she is going to be a direct competitor with the party, and she will be the last woman standing of her group as she uses her henchmen as fodder so that she can go ahead and get the prize. So maybe once, maybe twice, uh, Tallulah is going to emerge with whatever item the PCs were going after. Uh, and if they don't like it, she'll wear their tongues like a necklace. Uh, and she should say that during every bar fight, every romantic uh, advance by potential suitors or by uh, guards who have been told to usher her out. Uh, and I would imagine... You guys are going to see Tallulah Bedouin in a future adventure. <laughs> no. What? Yeah. I'm going to, uh, to be fair, uh, uh, to everyone listening and watching, this is the king of recycling over here. Frank, he will literally okay. use, If it's written down, it gets used at some point in some way in some far distant future. Or a week later. Hey, the bronze what? crab was awesome. Yeah, no, the bronze crab. And I didn't even participate in that. I was producing that one. See? Didn't even fuck up the audio on that one. So Tallulah Bedouin, uh, swarthy, heavily scarred, chainmail, bikini, uh, rough and tumble. That's who I got. Uh, Rob or Kyle, you're next. I got it. Go nope. ahead. Um, I'm. I've got an evil druid. So um, I have an evil druid whose name is uh, Salonix Silverill. Uh, and, um, he's, he's got a, an evil treant cult going on, trying to, <laughs> trying, trying to raise the great tree in the center of the citadel to ruin the city and bring it to its knees. Uh, okay. he's also unbeknownst to the party, the ancient, who is this elderly ancient, uh, man inside the citadel who's this font of strange and interesting knowledge that leads them on their way to trying to find out what's going on with this evil trees attacking the city and things. So I plan on using him in both ways and I'm, this is going to get used. So he is the pawn. He is using the party as pawns. He's using the party as pawns by giving them information leading to his destruction, but at the same point in time, kind of leading towards they're going to have to make that, linchpin decision there at some point in time so he's actually like the linchpin of the campaign but his goal is that there's an ancient stone circle in the in the city it's in a square and he wants to bring this tree mega tree to life and rip the city apart so nice. like a world tree kind of size tree what was Salonik's last name uh silver i like uh, so I assume that he is going to be the main focus, the main purveyor of jobs for the party? Uh, as the ancient, yeah. Okay. So a reoccurring NPC. Yep. Okay. And also not quite the BBEG, but the bringer of the BBEG. Is oh, the idea. so he is uh, not Zool. No, <laughs> no. Nice. No, no, no. Uh, what's he? What's uh, he look like, or what's his main trait? Well, um, 
as the ancient, he's a hunched old man uh, of of half elven. Well, he's half elven either way. But as the ancient, he's a hunched over old man who who uh, runs a bookshop at Come Library, and uh, yeah, just like that. Nice. What you got, Kyle? Last but not least. Uh, I have a halfling, a good halfling paladin by the name of Trebor, T-R-E-B-O-R, Wilsner, W-I-L-S-N-E-R. For being a short paladin, he is an incredibly optimistic uh, uh, character Um, as far as traits and uh, great in a fight. If you're in a fight, you want this guy on your back. Uh, He'll also give you quests. Um, His flaws however is that he is madly in love with the counterpart on the other side of the field uh so if it's Mad a Martigan? army huh oh you haven't seen willow never mind i haven't seen willow so yeah no okay <laughs> uh am i creating it i have found as a dm who has not witnessed anything that i very often recreate stuff that's already happening. <laughs> hey, that, that's I'm a good thing. Um, yeah, Sappho, like Shakespeare, like oh, I mean, <laughs> well, no. Uh, uh, for I was describing, uh, uh, I had a party go into the Shadowlands, and I describe it, and as I'm describing it, they're like, "This is the upside down from Stranger Things." I'm like uh-huh. what? No, it's not. I hate Stranger Things. I'll never watch the show. And my wife was like, "I tell my wife, she's like." No, that's the upside down from Stranger Things. Shit. <laughs> well, the upside uh, down from Stranger Things is stole for, stolen from older material. That's what I mean. Stupid. You well, can't how, write how? a new story. Shakespeare already freaking wrote it, but he stole uh, it from the Greeks. So okay. Trevor Wilsner uh, will often send his men to their deaths because he feeds information over to the other side. The thing is, though, that he is a good person. And he is simply trying to save uh, the person on the other side. Uh, And so he will actually lead these failed expeditions himself in order to prevent as much death as possible and potentially prevent his love from being killed as well. Does she reciprocate? I think she does. And if the party allows him to live long enough she will switch sides or they will switch sides and become an ally to the party and be a key factor in uh, defeating the big bad. They may be doing that depending on how the party acts one way or another, uh, but it's obvious that at some point there's going to be a crossroads where it's like, yeah, Trevor, you are the worst general ever, and if you weren't such a great fighter and an amazing leader, we would strip everything from you. What, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Will your party get the opportunity to kill his love interest as a rival foe? I think that's always going to be a possibility. Uh, that that is probably what's going to make this uh, uh, these two NPCs keep the interest going. Because if you kill one, the other suddenly comes to the forebear, and everything is realized if you let it continue on i don't think maybe players are that dense but i think they're eventually going to figure it out cool yeah and Uh, if you want to do it for a one shot then it's just like yeah at this point your players have realized something's not quite right here and they get led to a battle where everyone dies but them yeah that'll work a one shot a one shot if you do it in that style or and Romeo honestly, and Juliet. if you do a campaign style of it, the reason that the paladin is a quest giver and keeps sending the party out is because he knows the party is more likely to survive the encounter than any of his other men. And so he sends them into these ambushes that he knows are going to happen because they're more likely to come out of it okay on the other side, even if they do fail the mission. Kind of a dick move. 
absolutely a dick move. Kind of a dick move. There. Dick NPCs. Why do we have all these dick NPCs? That's right. Jesus Christ. Because he's oh, thinking with his NPCs. dick. There you go. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, folks, this has been uh, Between the Rolls. Uh, memorable NPCs. We hope you've gleaned some kind of useful information from us. Uh, feel free uh, at least to use Tallulah, if not the other two, uh, as your own NPCs in your own campaign or do it. Shot. Uh, and if you do, make sure you let us know how it turned out because uh, we love really bad stories, <laughs> especially if the party gets the shit kicked out of them. Heck, uh, if you use it, come on BTR. That's true. Ooh. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you want to be on this show? You want to be on a one shot? M Hobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail. Hit us up. We will get you on here. Uh, in the meantime, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archives. If you want to shoot shit about DD, join our Discord. If you want to buy our crap, including the sale on t shirts, that's a good buy. Under 12 bucks for a t shirt. Uh, check that out. Uh, tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. Uh, don't forget about Pirate Dog Dice if you want some custom dice. Next week on Between the Rolls, we are going to have Jen from oddfishgames.com telling us more about the Kickstarter, how it's going, giving us an update. Uh, maybe we even ask her about uh, New Adventure Sense. Will up. she uh, bring the, uh, the cat scratching post dice tower on the I show will, with her? I, w- I will ask uh the dice jail and the dice tower i will ask i know that the cat armor uh has already been claimed and that was 300 bucks so somebody really wanted that armor uh but other than that folks uh we've got kyle and his cred campaign on thursday this week on saturday (laughs) Rob, rob and i will be in calamity b land of the frog people uh what's happening over there either you met Dolph's grandfather Someone might croak. That's right. You met Boff. <laughs> because my NPC names suck. Uh, but for all of us here in Tallulah Bedouin, uh, follow us or I'll wear your tongue as a necklace. Folks, we'll see you on Thursday for Cred. Uh, big kiss and wave, everybody. Mwah. Oh.